you are looking at the world's first sulfur-powered vehicle. The apparatus in this vehicle utilizes the oxidizing power of sulfur to produce hydrogen, which then powers an internal combustion engine. This prototype apparatus, built from readily obtainable parts at a cost of about $2,000, produces hydrogen on board and on demand. The result is a zero emission vehicle powered by harnessing the energy of sulfur. The key to unlocking the energy in sulfur in a way that is environmentally benign is to use it as a source of fuel in a type of electrochemical reaction known as a fuel cell. To do this, we have combined molten sulfur with powdered graphite and dipped a copper strip in the mixture. The graphite facilitates an electron exchange between the sulfur and the copper conductor. When the sulfur electrode and an aluminum electrode are immersed in a sodium hydroxide solution, the sulfur goes into solution as sulfur hydroxide ions. The ions travel into the aluminum electrode to form aluminum sulfate and release an electron into the circuit. The result is an electric current. Here we have about a quarter amp. A second result of this reaction is that every molecule of aluminum sulfate produced yields 12 molecules of hydrogen. A more energetic reaction can be achieved by wrapping aluminum around one end of the copper strip, connecting the sulfur and aluminum electrodes with no resistor in between. When these electrodes are immersed in a sodium hydroxide solution, the resulting reaction produces hydrogen gas at a rate sufficient to sustain a continuous flame. To demonstrate a simple, useful application of this reaction, we have placed 120 homemade electrodes in each of these 12 sealable buckets. When these buckets are flooded with sodium hydroxide solution, the resulting reaction produces a mixture of hydrogen gas and sodium hydroxide dissolved in water vapor. In order to remove the sodium hydroxide, the gases are channeled through plastic tubes and collected in this pipe. From there, they pass through these water-filled towers. As the hydrogen percolates through the water, the sodium hydroxide is left behind. When the resulting purified hydrogen reaches a sufficient volume, a compressor switch is triggered and the gas is stored in this tank. Once we have an ample supply of compressed hydrogen, we open the valve that releases the gas and channel it through this tube and into the motor. And away we go.